Doran asks, how can I improve? This is a good question. I, I really like this question. How can I improve my questioning skills? That means my ability to ask good questions. Now, I'm assuming that this is for things like discussions or uh, maybe um, uh, asking questions of uh, teachers or maybe in a group setting like uh, a classroom, something like that. I I'm not sure exactly because the question doesn't say. I'm going to assume that Doran wants to ask interesting questions to get a conversation started, to get a discussion started on whatever topic. Now, actually, this is something that's very important as an English teacher. If I'm teaching students, uh, if I'm teaching students one-to-one, -one, often I need to get them talking about something. And to do that, I need to ask a really good question, a question that gets the gears moving. So the first thing is, whenever I think about questions, my goal is to make, I imagine people have gears in their heads. My goal is to make the gears move in someone else's head. If you ask a question that's a yes-no question, probably that will not get the gears moving, right? That's probably not a good a question. If someone says, you know, what year did the Civil War end in the United States? If you know the answer, if you don't know the answer, it's the same. It doesn't matter right? doesn't matter if you know the answer or not. So, uh, because it won't start a conversation, right? 1865. Okay. I don't know. Okay. There's no, there's no way to move forward, right? Now, some yes or no questions work if there's a way to ask why, right? So, do you think blah, blah, blah. Do you think blah, 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 right? Do you think coffee is uh, do you think drinking several cups of coffee per day is unhealthy? Yes or no? Now, this person might say yes. Another person might say no. Then I could say, though, why do you think so? Why do you think so? So if it's a yes or no question that ends with the yes or no, then it's not so good. But if it's a yes or no question that gets those gears moving in, in the other person's brain that starts some thoughts happening, then maybe it's good because then you can say, well, why do you think that? Tell me why you think that. Give me your opinion, right? Give me your perspective. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. The first tip I would, I would say, and we're going to look at some examples, would be to ask open questions that don't have a specific answer, that don't, that don't have an answer that you have to look up, but rather a question that's open that makes people's brains move that requires people to think about something and then give an opinion. If there's no right or wrong answer, that's probably a better question, right? If there's a right answer, then how can you have a discussion about something that has a right answer? Boring. So that's the first thing. The next one is to make abstractions. Now, making abstractions means don't limit yourself to exactly what the topic is. If the topic is smoking in public, do you have to only talk about smoking in public? So the best thing to do is to make an abstraction. What that means is to, you have this thing in the middle, this topic, smoking in public. Think around it a little bit. Think a little bit loosely as though it's a fuzzy thing and it has other ideas attached to it. Well, what's attached to smoking in public? Health. Childhood, raising children, being around uh, smoke in public, running businesses, right? City laws, um, uh, personal freedoms, right? Because if someone says you can't do that in public, other people might say, ah, yes, but what about my personal freedom? So these are some things that are kind of hanging around that main topic, and we can get into those as well. So if you're trying to find questions, don't limit yourself to exactly what that is, the topic. Instead, think loosely and find the things that are directly connected to it in some way. That's what I mean by make abstractions. Make abstractions. Okay. Next, you want to find subtopics. Now, a sub is sub. The word sub means under. So a subtopic is a topic under a topic. 
So again, if we're talking about uh, if we're talking about smoking laws in public, or let's say just smoking in public, well, one part of that might be specifically laws that we might pass. But is that the only kind of thing under that? No, we might also be talking about uh, other ideas to discourage people from smoking in public places, right? Maybe not a law, but maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, an, an advertising campaign or something like that. So there are also categories and topics under a main topic that you can consider. So if your, your view is a little broader of a topic, then you should be able to find something to ask about. So number one, make sure you are uh, uh, asking open questions, and those open questions should get someone to think about something and give their opinion, and then make abstractions, think around a topic, find related topics, very closely related, and also subtopics. Okay, so that's the second thing. Now, when you are keeping the question open, you have to think about the form of the question, right? So there are a couple. You might ask something like, why? Or why do you think da 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 da, right? Because anytime you ask someone a why question, they have to think a little bit more deeply, right? Why do you think, mm, oh, let me think about that. Well, and then they have to give an opinion. You might ask a question that starts with a how. If someone has to answer a how question, then they have to explain something, right? How could we, hmm, let me think about that. Well, first we could one, two, three, right? A how question. So why questions and how questions. Now, what questions can be dangerous? If we ask a what question, what year was this person born or something like that, it's not good. It's not good. We, ask, we have to be a little careful with why questions too. Because if someone says, why is smoking unhealthy? Then again, I'm just listing things that you can find online. So why ask that question? That's not an interesting, that's not an interesting question. Because we can just look it up online, right? Everybody, everybody kind of knows the facts of smoking, and we can just list facts. So it's not a great, not a great question. Um, we, could say, we could say, what do you think, though? A what question could be, what do you think about this? Now, you have to be a, very, a little bit careful about what do you think questions, too, because if it's too big, then people won't know where to start. Okay, So if I say, what do you think about smoking in public? Where do I begin? I don't know. That's a, that's a big topic. But if I say something like, what do you think about the idea of giving people certain benefits, like, uh, I don't know, uh, a bonus on your taxes if you don't smoke in public places. Some specific idea. I'm just making that up. But something very specific. Then people can start by talking about how they feel about that idea exactly. So that's a good way to start. We might say something like, what would you do if... Or if you were, da, 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 what would you do? That's called a hypothetical question. A hypothetical question is a question that asks people to imagine something that's not real, right? So, for example, if you were in charge of making the laws, what would you do? You're not in charge of that, but if you were. So that's a good way to make people really imagine, if I were in that position, how would I handle it? What would I, what would I do? So using what would you do if or if you were, for example, if you were uh, the mayor of, of, a of a city, what would you do to limit smoking in public places, especially around children? Okay, and then you can answer that question after you imagine that. That can be a good way to begin. Uh, how could we? That's usually about a specific problem. How do you think we could deal with this, deal with that? Then you're asking the person, the other person, to give you a plan, right? Explain their plan for how to do that. And the last one we might ask about pros 
and cons. Pros and cons. Pros are good things. Cons are bad things. So we might say, what are the pros and cons of something? What are the pros and cons of maybe making smoking in all public places illegal? What are the good things about that idea? What are the bad things about that idea? What are the pros and cons? So that's always a good, a good question because at least you have to answer both sides, this side and that side. So why don't we take these ideas? We've got the idea of asking open questions, questions that make people think or give an opinion rather than a right, a wrong answer, or a yes or a no. And we've got making abstractions, thinking around a topic, finding subtopics or topics under a topic or related to it. So why don't we actually practice this a little bit? Let's say our topic, and I would like to see your, your questions too. Give me your questions. Um, let's, let's make the topic self-driving cars, okay? Or autonomous, autonomous vehicles. So a self-driving car is a car that drives itself, <laughs> right? So let's say that's our topic, and we're going to discuss this. We have a discussion group. We're going to discuss it. Now I'm going to consider my role to be the question asker, not the, not the person who's giving my opinion, giving my opinion. I'm going to be the person who's asking the questions. That actually makes things easier for me. I can focus on coming up with interesting questions, then I don't need to focus on giving long answers, right? Okay, so let's say, let's say, uh, hey, all right, let's say what might be the future of self-driving cars or what would the future of self-driving cars look like? Now that's a what question, but you're asking the person to create an example. What would this look like? What would the future of self-driving cars look like? Or what do you think the future of self-driving cars looks like? That's better than saying, what do you think about self-driving cars? Because again, someone might say, uh, I don't know. Where do I begin? I don't know. But if I make it more specific, what do you think the future of self-driving cars looks like? Uh, that that person has to really think about that certain thing and then maybe tell you how they see the future in five, five years, okay? Uh, maybe at what point, at what point would you trust a self-driving car with your life? Now there you're asking a person to, again, consider something hypothetically. Hypothetical, it's not real. You have to imagine at what point, at what point would you trust a self-driving car with your life. And they might think about the different requirements they would have before they would be willing to take a nap as their self-driving car drove them to work, okay? What would be your criteria or what would be your requirements? Okay, you can think about that. That would be one question. Uh, what, do you think, what do you think are the possible economic benefits or downsides of self-driving cars. Okay, that would be another one. Now we're talking about things around self-driving cars, right? Or maybe it's not even self-driving cars. If we're thinking around a topic, what might be some of the economic pros and cons? Uh, economic is the adjective of economy. What might be some of the economic pros and cons of automation and AI? AI means artificial intelligence, automation, things like factory robots, maybe self-driving cars, uh, this general category of robots and machines doing things by themselves, right? Automated trucks, for example. Instead of just saying self-driving cars, we might broaden the topic a little bit to all types of automation and AI. Okay, that could be a good question too. Why, why don't we step back a little bit. We can consider the topic a little bit more broadly. Instead of saying uh, uh, something about cars specifically, maybe we can talk about an important person related to self-driving cars. 
Elon Musk is the founder of Tesla, right? Tesla is a very famous uh, electronic car manufacturer in the United States. And we might say something like, why do you think Elon Musk has started so many companies, a space company, a drilling company, an electric car company, a brain interface company? He started a lot of companies. Why do you think he's starting so many companies? <laughs> why can't he share the load a little bit? Okay, so we're talking about something or someone related to our topic, but not exactly related to cars. Okay, we could talk specifically about trucks. When truckers are replaced by self-driving trucks, when this happens, uh, what will they do? What will they do? And then we can talk about the kind of jobs they might have to get or anything related to, to um, their work or how they make money once they no longer have the ability to make money driving trucks. Okay, so those are some examples of questions we could ask around this topic. And so the last thing I'll say on this is when you're in a discussion, when you're in a conversation, uh, and you want to be the one asking the good questions, you can relax and not focus on giving your opinion, but then focus on getting everyone else's gears moving, right? Making them think about something deeply and share an opinion or explain something, at least think more deeply about a topic. To do that, you have to be able to find topics around it and ask those open and interesting questions. So uh, that's my answer to Doran's question about how to improve your question asking skills. And if that's not what you meant, Doran, <laughs> I answered the wrong thing. Well, I'm sorry. You have to be more specific.